Now we look at some basics. So as I said earlier, I am assuming that you have not done any course in communication. So we will talk about certain communication basics so that all of us are at the same page. Uh, we start with analog and digital signals. All the naturally occurring signals are analog. We digitize them for different reasons uh, through a process called analog to digital conversion. This process you have learnt in your basic signals and systems course. How do you digitize an analog signal? You would first do sampling, then you would do a quantization process. So, what does it mean? Let us say I have an analog signal which I am tracing through this red line. You decide to sample at specific sampling frequency. Now, the sampling frequency is decided by the bandwidth of your signal and Nyquist criteria tells you that the sampling frequency must be at least twice the largest frequency content of your analog signal. So, if your largest frequency content let us say is FB, you need to sample at at least twice FB. So, that decides your time duration between sampling. So, you have fixed the x axis now. Now, at Speci those specific time durations, you look at the value of your signal and then decide a quantized level for the signal. So, the entire range of your y axis, you decide, you pre decide by how many levels would I want to quantize. So, this particular example shown here is actually a 8 level quantization, there are 8 levels and you need 3 bits for 8 level quantizations. So, the number of levels of quantization, so if you have n bits or n sorry here I have used number of quantization levels as n, if I have n levels of quantization, the number of bits is 2 power, let me call this as bit b as number of bits that is equal to So, if my bandwidth is FB, the largest frequency is FB in my signal, following Nyquist you need 2 times FB as your sampling rate and depending on the number of levels you decide to quantize, you would have that much number of bits to represent the same analog signal. How do you decide the number of levels that you want to quantize now? that is depending on how much vertical accuracy, your amplitude accuracy, your quantization accuracy do you need in the system. Larger the number of levels, more accurate your signal representation is going to be. But what is the downside? Larger the number of vertical levels, more number of bits would you need to represent the same information. Okay? So, that is the trade off. For example, you take speech signal, we are most sensitive between 2 kilohertz and 4 kilohertz. In fact, there is a slight difference between the frequencies generated by or produced by males and females uh, between different languages there could be small changes in pitch and so on. But in general, your speech signal can be represented between the 2 to 4 kilohertz. So, if you do the same calculation for a speech signal and say that the largest frequency is going to be 4 kilohertz. Uh, Let us say we decide to do 8 bit quantization, which means that each sample is going to repre get represented by 8 bits. So, that there are 2 power 8 levels, so there are 256 levels to quantize. Then your bit rate is going to be 2 because of Nyquist, 4 into 10 power 3 because of your bandwidth and there are 8 bits that represents each sample. So, your total data rate is 64 kilobits per second. 
and this is the data rate of a basic telephone signal. Now, depending on whether you are using uh, transmitting a high density video or an internet con content or uh, I mean it, it depends on what kind of video you want to transmit, what are the uh, frequencies that you want to transmit, you may want to change the quantization level, you may want to change the sampling rate, but the basic calculation is this. This is how you move from bandwidth to bit rate in your analog to digital conversion process. Now comes modulation. So, you first quantized your signal, you sampled and quantized, you found what are the number of bits or you found the bits that will represent a speech signal or the signal that you want to transmit. The next thing you want to do is modulate. Question is why do you want to modulate? Before that let me explain what do you do in modulation. In modulation you have your baseband signal. Now what is a baseband signal? The digital signal that you generated in the previous slide that is a baseband signal. Multiply it with a local oscillator which multiply it with a sinusoid generated from a local oscillator whose frequency is Fc. What you get is Xt times cos 2 pi Fct. This is a basic representation of modulation. In the frequency domain how does it look like? You have your baseband signal that gets multiplied by this. So, your basic Fourier uh, transform loss tells you that in the time domain a multiplication would, would mean a convolution in frequency domain. So, if you convolve a sinusoid with this signal, you get copies on either side. So, from a baseband signal, you move to what is called as a band pass signal. Center frequency is decided by your local oscillator frequency. Why do you do this process? Why do you have to do this process? I mean the answer is written here. If I can do this, first of all given the same channel, I will be able to transport signal from person 1 to person 2 to person 3 to person 4. I can use slightly different carrier frequencies and modulate the information from F, uh, this, this let us say is from a specific telephone line, this could be from the second telephone line, this could be from the th third telephone line and so on. So, I can keep using my frequency spectrum and simultaneously use the channel to transport information from different users. So, that is the first reason why you need modulation. Of course, there are physical reasons why you need modulation. Uh, in your electromagnetics, you may have learned that it is very hard to transport signal whose frequency is very narrow. Why? The antenna size that is required is decided by the frequency of operation, right. The size of the antenna is proportional to the wavelength. So, smaller is the frequency, larger is the wavelength, longer is your antennas required. So, of course, for those reasons, again, if you want to use a free space communication, the practical limitations on antenna size will force you to push your uh, signals into several passbands. So, when you say 2G or LTE, they will have a certain band of frequencies and the information from different users will get modulated at slightly different FCs. That is one way of multiplexing information. Okay. So, again you cannot transport this baseband signal, it is at low frequencies you will have lot of environmental noise in the system you have the 50 hertz noise of your transmission line, all that will, all those uh, issues because of the interference, issues because of the noise will go away the moment you shift it to the band pass. You cannot also transport two information in the same baseband because they will interfere. So, that is why you need modulation. 